looking around these walls I thought by now they fall But you have never failed me change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness
You can do better than that. How many of you seen it move? Come on, give him a good prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank him that we can, we've seen him move. We have a witness of his moving. Anybody got a witness of his moving some mountains for you? You have a witness of him making a way for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to Dove Church. We're glad you're here. Another Sunday, another chance to brag on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for all of you that tune in and who listen to us faithfully. And then those who, who seed into the ministry, we appreciate your support. And we thank God for you. We ask him to return it to you, press down, shaken together, and running over in kind and we believe God for multiplicity in your lives. We thank God for those of you in the house that serve this house diligently that that are part of this house and we thank God for you. And we thank God for this work that he's assigned to our hand. And with that we're going to move fastly into the word. Everybody with your physical bible and I've asked you to bring a paper bible with you. Amen. 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 Uh, lift those Bibles up and, and repeat after me. If you don't have it, don't go into condemnation. Just lift up where your word is on your iPad or your phone. Amen. Amen. Let's say our confession together. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging, Word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. As I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes. That faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's pray. Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we come against any warring spirit against this word today. And we thank you and we bless you today that you've quelled attacks already against it in our mind, in our heart, and in their natural environment. And so in Jesus' name, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for taking us where we need to be and being our comforter, being our paraclete, running alongside of us, helping us to think as God in the earth. And now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer, and they all said, Amen, Amen. We're talking from the subject today, breathe. Everybody say that. Breathe. Say it again. Breathe. Now take a good deep breath. Breathe. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to make a statement that sounds almost like I don't need to make it. Breathing is important. I started to say, ask any dead person. Breathing is important. Breathing is important to God. It is his method. It is his method for getting himself inside of you. Breathing is important to God. Let's start this off by giving a little background information that, that sets up the remainder of the message. If they're a little bit noisy, you might need to remove them from the room today. I need attention. Breathing. Let's turn to Genesis 1, 26 and 27. One twenty six and 27. And everything is in New King James, except for uh, one scripture reference is going to be read out of New King James and then out of the Passion Translation. But it's going to come overhead. And it starts in, in the reading begins here. Then God said. I want you to repeat that. Then God Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, over every creeping things that creep on the earth. So God created man in his own in the of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. That last verse said, male and female, he created them. That, that would be a good jumping off point to preach about that they were created in equal status. As a working unit, the foundation of family. But that's not the focus of the message. Originally, you were a lump of clay. A lump of clay. Many of you have played with clay. You made things out of clay. And sometimes misguided, you tried to eat clay. And some people have reported that they did eat clay. During special times in a woman's life. But many of you can, can, can attest to the fact that no matter what you made, if you made a form or dial out the clay that it did not live. It was not alive. You tried to make it alive, but it was not alive. All right. The Bible tells us what breathing accomplished. After Genesis 126 and 127, we find out what, what breathing accomplished and how important breathing is to God. Genesis 2 and 7. I'm going somewhere. We're going to end up in Acts again. Amen. Amen. That same chapter, that same one chapter I've been preaching on, the 16th chapter. But Genesis 2 and 7 says, And the Lord, capital W-O-R-D. So you won't get confused with what Lord in the earth it is. The Lord. God. Form man of the dust of the ground. That's that lump of clay. 
But here is when the lump transitioned and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. The King James says a living soul. So immediately with God's breath in him, he became spirit, soul, and body. which separated him from a dead lump of clay. And he even separated him from the animal. He, he, he had created animals and, and birds and fish and everything, and they were breathing, but it, did, it wasn't called the breath of life until it got to man. Because it was a certain caliber of life. Because when God breathes on you and into you, he breathes himself into you. So therefore you get the likeness of God in your soul and in your spirit. That's why he could say, you were created, let us make them in our image. You're not just anybody, so breathing is important. I'm going to try to stay calm. Tap somebody if you're near them and say breathe. breathe. I know this is the age where we wearing masks. We don't want anybody to breathe on us. <laughs> but say it through the mask to somebody. Breathe. I submit to you that the image of God spoken in Genesis 1, 26, again, did not become the image of God until Genesis 2 and 7. It was then that man became a living being. You live because the breath of God is in you. Come on. Come on. God only had to blow life into you one time. He only blew it into Adam. And God's breath has been in the earth ever since. <laughs> Eve could come to life because of what God did with Adam. My God. Your breathing has an image attached to it. Because when God breathed into you, he breathed himself into you. In our image. The life breath in Greek is called pneuma. P-N-E-U-M-A. Numa. And you see it in front of, it's a prefix in front of many breathing ailments or breathing situations. Pneumonia. Pneumocystic. There is a, a tube system of delivery that was in the hospital that I worked at a children's hospital way back in the day, and it was called a pneumatic tube system. That means it used vacuum and air to move the, the, the tube throughout the hospital, and it would land at different stations, and you could put something inside of this tube, close it, hit the button, and it would go to where you sent it to, and it was called a pneumatic tube system. It had to do with the air pushing it around to certain places where they controlled it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You're in hospital systems and you knew about pneumatic too. It's called pneuma, breathing, breath, Greek. Pneuma means spirit, soul, or creative force. To expand it. So when God breathed into you, he breathed creative force inside of you. 
You are creative because of what was breathed into you. And that's akin to the likeness and the image of God. God is, is always creating. His image is not stagnant. It's ever evolving. That's why the, the angels could sing the same song over and over again. The one word song about God. Holy. Because every time they bow in their submission to his holiness and come back up, he looks different. And God is so creative even with you. You can, I can, I, I, I'll bet money that he has blessed you over and over and time and time again. But he's never done it the same way twice. Has he ever done it the same way twice for anybody? You might have gotten money several times, but he never did it the same way twice. Because God ain't that boring. He's creative. That's why you just sung about he can make a way where there is. And, and we like the way he does that. And we say, do it again. It's just like when I'm with my grandbabies, sometimes uh, my older ones, and I used to mess with them and throw them around and stuff, and they say, do it again. Do it again. Do it again, Poppy. And that's what we say to God. However you bless us, do it again, Poppy. We don't know how you're going to do it, but do it again. Yeah. Well, some of y'all don't want nothing. You know, you don't have to say nothing. And if you don't say nothing, you don't get nothing. And if you don't get nothing, don't expect nothing. It's just that easy. Just sit there and just... No, you don't have to get nothing. That's an option. Turn to somebody and tell them you are not without options today. Okay, all right, all right. The difference between us and animals and, and that level of creation is that we, we, we look like God. We were created in God's image. We had that same creative force. That's why Adam's job was to name everything. It didn't have a name until he gave it because in us is creative force. That means with this ability, we can think Imagine and create. Here lately, Pastor and I have been watching a certain, uh, uh, we like different shows. We like home improvement shows. We like competitions where they, they, they do their houses and kitchen, living room and all that kind of stuff. We, we enjoy that. We also like some of the, 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 the fashion things, the design elements of that. And, and in particular, there's a show called Making the Cut. And it's always interesting how somebody could have a day to make, some, make two or three outfits and have them runway ready. And, 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 and so that person, that, 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 that they think they're operating in their own gifting is really operating in the creative force of God. Because you couldn't create it unless you could imagine it and think it. And so what you imagine, you, God has so maneuvered us that he's given us hands that we can cut it out. And what was in our mind, we can put it before us and make it tangible and touchable. Because many of them, while they imagine the assignment, they start drawing it out first. So, so, but before they draw it, the picture is in their head. Then they, they draw the picture, they make a pattern from the picture, and they put it together, Emily. Sew it together, stitch it together, finish it, and then put it on a model. And, and what was in their head, creatively, is walking down the aisle. You drive in something that was in somebody's head one time. And it's not a horse and buggy. Anybody shopped lately for a brand new horse? And a buggy. No, you got a chariot, but it's got a V6. <laughs> 
created. Not only can we imagine it, but because we are God image, I open up by saying, then God said, you have speaking ability. And with that ability, you can create worlds and change times and transition your situation. That's why when the enemy wants to attack you first, he tries to change your thought life because it will control your mouth life. And you start saying stuff out of habit. Some stuff you say you don't know where it came from. I don't step on cracks because that's bad luck. Where did you get that from? I cover up my mirrors when it's thundering. As if lightning could reflect off the mirror. No bet, black cat bet not cross my path. Some of you are just afraid of black cats in general. Come on, fess up, fess up. I, I want the truth today. But a little later down in the message, we're going to talk about another fear of yours is greater than of cats, is of snakes. Whew. I'm not going to go to rats and all other creeps. But here is the truth. We just read I read early in scripture where, where he gave man dominion over all creeps. So you got authority over the creeps. <laughs> oh, oh, this is a rough one today. <laughs> but but we're going to work it on out. Speaking faith is what Abraham did, and the Bible says, who calls those things that be not as though they were. You have the ability to call something that, that, that is not as though it were already, because God has created you. That Abraham called for us before we ever showed up. He called for it. Childless. He called for children before we ever showed up. Childless. That's how powerful your speaking is. And you can have what you say. But what are you saying? How are you saying it? Is your emotions speaking? If you don't feel nothing, if you don't see anything... Is God still working? You just sung that. So when you say it, if you don't have it, does it mean that you don't have it? <laughs> you got to say it until it show up. And if your faith is weak, get a picture that supports it. So when your mouth is out of whack, just look at the picture. Some of you just need to get a picture and shut up. <laughs> Tie your mouth up. I'm about to go in doubt. To start watching. Well, let's go into the lesson. <laughs> Acts 16, 16 through 18. I'm going to read it in New King James, then I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation because there's a word that's in there that's key and important. Acts 
See, sometimes we need to, we need to teach some stuff that, that helps deliver God's people into a better place when you know what's up on you. When you know what's trying to capture, when you know what's happening in your life, when you know what's, what's going on. Can we make some adjustment in the seating in the house? Where, where my usher at? Sure. The three that just came in, put them over on this side over here. No, no, Shirley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over here. Amen. Thank you. We love you. We're trying to keep everybody safe and comfortable at the same time. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. In front of Tim and Lindy on the, or yeah, uh, yeah, on the end over here, or in the middle of that one. Yeah. 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 That's good. Thank you. Love you. Pastor's aware we're in a COVID reality. Amen. Do you have Acts 16, 16 through 18 in your Bibles? Let's read. Now it happened. Everybody say, now it happened. As we went to prayer, that's key. As we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl possessed, everybody say possessed, with a spirit of divination, met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. I'm telling a whole story there. This girl followed Paul and us, meaning Silas and and, and Luke and the, the persons that were with Paul. This girl followed us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. This girl followed them. Here's the funny thing. She did not lie on them. But what makes us know that she was suspect is that it had mentioned that she was a slave girl and her masters had, this isn't written in there, but had trained her and had, they were into divination and they got her into it. And so she was working that kind of work with them. But the devil knows what God wants. One of my very fine members once said, and this is talking about people that when they come among the saints, they do what the saints do. They said there was a man who came in off the street, I think he was a drunk or something, and Everybody was shouting and he started shouting. But then after a while he got tired and asked, how long y'all do this? So they will come in among you and say what sounds good like you do and act like you do, but they're not of the spirit. Come on, come on. Let me, let me finish reading this. And this she did for many days. Everybody say many days. So everywhere Paul and them went for many days, she did this. Look this way, please. But but after a while, the Bible says, Paul, what what was he? Uh, Not just annoyed. Greatly annoyed. That means he, well, I can't say that. (laughs) 
greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her that very hour. All right. Now let's read it, the same scripture in the Passion Translation. One day as we were going to the house of prayer, we encountered a young girl who had an evil spirit of divination, the spirit of Python. She had earned great profits for her owners by being a fortune teller. She kept following us, shouting, these men are servants of the great high God, and they're telling us how to be saved. Now, that's a devil talking. Day after day, she continued to do this until Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit indwelling her, I command you in the name of Jesus, the anointed one, to come out of her. At that very moment, not throughout the day it eased out and moved out room by room. The spirit came out of her. When her owners realized that their potential of making profit had vanished, they forcefully seized Paul and Silas and dragged them off to the city square to face the authority. That's just before. That's when Paul and Silas got arrested. So when you assault the devil on his home, home turf, he don't go away. He goes to the next level. I know what I'll do with you. You got that much power to try to throw me out. I'll make sure you get arrested. But don't stop preaching, don't stop speaking, don't stop talking, don't stop telling them to go to hell. Sometimes it'd be good that when you go through, you say, next. Come on, Jesus. Next. We, we, we got the stuff to make it through that too. Because we, we have a record that you make a way out of nowhere. We have a record that you are a way maker. We have a record that you are a deliverer. So we're going to rest on your record and not ours. Anybody can trust God's record. I want you to stay woke. The enemy wants to choke the breath out of you. That's why I read the Passion Translation, because it said something interesting. Demonation, when you do the research on it, it's a Greek word, and, 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 and when they heard divination, it immediately brought on thoughts of Python, which had a temple in Greece to, to the Python snake. And that python snake has a certain operation in the spirit and in the natural. Pythons don't bite to poison you. Pythons are in the caliber of snake that are called constrictors. Oh God. You better stay here with me. Constrictors, like the boa constrictor. It's a spirit that's loose in the earth, and they will create a temple to it. This spirit gives rise to fortune teller and familiar spirits. The reason why the girl could sound like she was telling the gospel is because she was familiar through what had been happening before Paul and them got there. Say this when they get there. These are great men of God. They come to save us. You can't get saved aside using the name Jesus. And she didn't use the name Jesus. That's how you know a fake. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that calls you into salvation without Jesus yeah. is a fake. Yeah. Yeah. 
By saying these great men, she was appealing to their pride and try to puff their ministry up to give her own self credibility. I know what they're about. I'm in this thing too. They've come to save us. But she didn't say Jesus. <laughs> Watch out for anything that can't say Jesus. <laughs> that's when you ought to. You, that, that's when you ought to get, get like Paul. You keep walking. You say. You say she keeps saying the same thing. But there's something annoying me. There is something bothering me. There's something that she's doing that's getting on my nerve. These men are great. They've come to save her. She, she said. He said. But there's something annoying me. There's something bothering me. There's something getting on my nerve. Oh, I know what it is. She's never said the name Jesus. So he turned to that heifer. He didn't talk to the girl. See, we act up on each other. We clown on each other. He didn't talk to the girl. He talked to that spirit. He said, you nasty, vile snake. Come out of her. Come out of her. And he left her. And when he left her, and she couldn't tell fortune tell, what do you think about this person? Oh, I don't know. They got upset and they want to throw you in the jail. See, when you start dismantling Satan's kingdom, he'll get mad at you and he'll try to lock you up and lock you away. But he don't know that your God is able to do the jailhouse rock. Come on, come on. That's why you ought to holler sometime next. In Jesus' name. Somebody holler next. See, see, you, you get bold. See, y'all don't want nothing else. Lord, just save me from everything. Don't let nothing else hurt me ever again. It's not going to happen. You're going to get hit. You're going to get hit again. But you've got something that's greater. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. Even when I keep getting hit. I took a hit coming here today, but I'm standing here. Where do you attack it? And on the spiritual level, every foul thing you can try to bring up, you tried to bring up because you wanted me to suffer a hit. Then you want to try to send me to sleep or you want to get me in pain or you want to do something that take me away from what I need to do because you're trying to choke the breath out of me. You're trying to be a constrictor and squeeze me until I can't breathe no more because you know if I can't breathe, I can't worship, I can't praise. I can't serve God. Y'all better wake up. And stop being passive. Put both your feet on the ground. Get out of the relaxed position because you can't afford to recreate when you need to be on your guard because your breathing is at stake. Your breathing is at stake. Are, are you out there? Don't relax on me today. Sit up. Pay attention. What is Python? The name means snake. Again, it is a constrictor. Like a natural snake, this spirit slowly seeks to asphyxiate you. That means cut off breath, squeeze you. How does it squeeze you? Through suffocation. Cuts off breath. 
And we are crazy if we don't understand that the ability to squeeze comes in inattentiveness to the things of God. When you can't hear the word of God, you are in a squeeze. And the only time you think of God is when it's emergency room only. I'm in a tight place. Help me. Come pray for me. Have you noticed that in many emergencies, the first thing that happened to you is you said, I can't breathe. It's asphyxiation. Are you listening? What is spiritual constriction? What is it? It's a lessening of the desire to pray. Eventually moving the person to become prayerless. He wants you only to pray in an emergency. But ER praying is risky because it means there might not be relationship attached to it. It's important for me in the natural world to form alliances with people and sometimes I'm able to leverage things because I'm in relationship with them. And when I'm in relationship, I can do an ask and more likely it will happen. But if they don't know me and I just show up, unless there is a heavy God intervention, I'm more than apt going to get a no. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Number two. There is a constant attack on the spiritual walk, moving the moral boundary more and more. Because little allowances turn to great allowances. I watch certain conditions in church world, how we went casual because we want people to be comfortable. And now as I look around, I don't want them to be comfortable anymore. Because they're too casual. I go into some places and I say, oh my God. You all are too comfortable. Number three, there is no breakthrough. The scriptures say, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Not morning by morning, new breakthroughs. No no breakthrough I will not have. You don't have any breakthrough. Everything is one situation after another, after another, after another, after another. That is spiritual constriction. The next one is, there is a constant dry season. Number four, dry season. When you ever going to come around? I'm going through. But when are you going to get out of through? He didn't blow his image in you for you to constantly be going through. You are image. Say amen, somebody. The next one is stagnancy. You're stuck in a place. It's constriction. Stagnation. Number six is depression. You in the dark all the time. Depressed. 
Woe out. Your depression has levels. I was depressed yesterday, but I'm really depressed now. Seven. You have a fear that you'll never be released from any ailment or sickness. This is spiritual constriction. What are some of the ailments that are akin to spiritual constriction? That seem to be rampant in the earth. They are pneumonia. Here is that word pneuma. Breath. Force. Creative force. Asthma. Bronchitis. COVID. The hallmark of COVID has been its effect on the lungs. The breathing. Because this spirit of Python is attached to COVID. And it's a constrictor because it wants to stop you from breathing. And the first thing they do after a while, when you first get so heavily sick, what is the first thing they do? They put you on oxygen. To help you breathe. And from then, if that doesn't do, you go on a breathing machine. How many know what I'm talking about? Some of you have been on a breathing machine. Some of you have been on oxygen. Because your breathing is in jeopardy. And it's akin to that spirit of Python. Let's talk about regions of the country where, where, where that python, that fortune-telling spirit is, is, is active and we long to go to those places, New Orleans, Witchcraft Central. Every known thing is happening. Every art under art is practiced. Prostitution sexual deviation, everything. It's the only street you can walk down and see some swing off or swing out the door. And in that region is a proliferation of the python snake. Florida, the Everglades. I was reading where there is a proliferation of snakes because people, when they, when, they, when, they, when they have pet snakes and, and, and they get too big, in other words, they get afraid that they're going to get eaten. They release them down there. But they're not releasing them because they they think that it's serving them a purpose. It is a spirit of Python that is attracting them to that reach. So there is a proliferation. You can check it out. Google it when you get home. And so it saunters in and out of the church world where people that don't think they can get free of anything and we can... We get, we get tightening and constriction and, and, and hopelessness and all of those things. I'll never come up. I'll never come around. That is not God's plan for you. Turn to Jeremiah 29 and 11 right quick. Come on, come on. Turn to it in your Bible, everybody. Don't even put it up. Don't find it and put it up.
Do you have it? What does it start with? Come on, let's read that together. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Say that again. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. What, what are his thoughts after this comma? Read that. Thoughts. To give you a what? To give you what? Is God thinking good stuff for you? To give you what? To have a future you must be breathing? To have a future you must have hope? You will have hope in that future. That, that's what God is thinking about you. I want your future to be full of hope, to be full of life, to be full of breathing, to be full of clearness, to be full of abundance, to be full of passion, to be full of mercy, to be full of mission, to be full of evangelism, to be full of kingdom works. I know what I want you to have. What do you want? And why do you want what God does not want for you? Why are you after what God does not want for you? Who is he giving it to? To give you a hope. And the future. My times are in your hand. Thank you, God. No matter what you say, my times are in your And if you aren't understanding that you are misguided. Whatever's going on, your times are in his hand. Suicidal ideations. To kill yourself, that's number nine. To kill yourself is to deny yourself breath. It is a squeeze. Saying this is a is my plight. Is a squeeze. Remedy. And I'm almost through. Prayer is the remedy. First Thessalonians 5.17. Write it down. It says pray without ceasing. And then I like Ephesians 1, 15 through 20. Certain scriptures, it's amazing that when I read, I always think of this person or that person or this person because they say it or they've said it is their favorite. And for some reason, when I read it, I don't, if it's a preacher somewhere or one of my members, and I, and I remember this one from, from Rose, and, 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 and she says, from Ephesians, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know 
What is the hope of his calling? What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Also remember Joel Brooks for this. Here are some reasons why you need to pray without ceasing. This help you put the squeeze on the squeezer. Prayer provides access to God. Relationship. Somebody say relationship. relationship. Say it again. Not churchiness. Not position. Not bishopric or apostleric or pastorate. It's relationship. Number two. Prayer provides answers. Number three, prayer gives strength. If you are weak and need strength, pray. Four, prayer invites the Holy Spirit into the situation. And you need the Holy Spirit, not your thinking. How many of you know your, stink, your thinking can be stinking sometimes? It don't line up. And sometimes there is too much war in our thinking. My God. Five, prayer invites the rule of God into your life. God, take control. Rule in this situation. Rule. 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 Six. This is the final one, but it's the greatest one. Prayer makes you more like Jesus. Because if Jesus had to pray, what's your problem? We pray every Sunday morning at 8.30. 9.30. What's your problem? If you have an impedance to prayer, you ought to sort that thing out. It doesn't go to your recreational spirit or, or convenience because some things merit are so important they are beyond your convenience. It's beyond your why should I do. Not when this has said, pray. So breathe. Breathe. Come against every ailment that wants to stop you from breathing. That's if it's, ain't, it's not so much hate in your heart that you can't even listen. Breathe. That's a constrictor too. Hatred is a constrictor. Malice. Unforgiveness is a constrictor. Breathe. All over the room, take a good deep breath. Breathe. Some of you need to get free. Even if you had COVID and, and they said, well, one of the signs of that, you would be a long hauler and you would have problem breathing and a constant cough. I'm coming against it today because it's against breathing. It's the spirit of Python and it's not God's thing. God blew into you his breath of life and that's what you're going to do. And you're going to operate in breathing like he said you would operate. And out of that breathing will come creative force, healing force, healing stream, deliverance, and a new walk, new lung. So breathe in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I bind the enemy that wants to stop you, that thing that are tying you down and, and, and causing you to get breathless and say, I can't breathe because the situations of life have encroached upon you so much to you, you don't even know you're up from a down. You can't even pay attention. 
breathe. Young people that don't think they can get past because of where they are and because of things that happened to them. And I, I want you to say, God forgives you. His forgiveness is, is unwrapping the snake and saying, but breathe. <laughs> it's, it's loosening the grip and say, breathe. It's taking away all the excuses and he said, breathe. Hey, in case you didn't know it, I know the thoughts I think about you. Breathe. They're good thoughts today. Breathe. Thoughts to give you a hope and a future. <laughs> Breathe today. One songwriter wrote it this way. He said, this is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence. Living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Spoken to me, life. And because of that, I'm getting free. I'm desperate for you. Come on, get on your feet. Anybody desperate for him today? And I. I'm lost without you. Starting from the top. This is the air. This is the air. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence. Living. You are my daily bread. You are my daily bread. Your very word spoken. Anybody desperate today? Can I Any desperate people today? <laughs> and uh, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank.
devil worshiping him in the Holy Ghost. Come on, all over the room. in this room and you heard what we said today and you believe the word of the Lord that came across this room you believe it because I did mention the name Jesus and he saves to the uttermost oh you can surrender your life to him today care where you've been what you come from you can get rid of the constrictor that wants to squeeze breath out of you, squeeze life out of you. Because today a loving God knows what he has planned for you. To give you a hope and a future. If I'm talking to somebody in the room and you wanted to make a decision to surrender your heart to him, to be saved, to be filled, to become a part of this church, any one of those, just lift up a hand real quick. That's you today. You want to be saved. Come on, surrender. I'm talking to somebody in this room. You want to be transformed. He's here to do that now. Praise the Lord to all of our viewers. We thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.